All right, so the the Ghostbusters stuff continues. This is going to be, well, I, I suppose we'll get a lot of this for the next couple of weeks. And then probably by summer, it's going to die down. And, and then I don't think we'll see it start up again until the movie comes out next summer. I think that's when we'll get, you know, more on this. But for right now, the, we're going to get some initial reads for a little bit because of the announcement and the 2016 movie and all the the blowback that movie got. And we're going to get into that a little bit in this video. A little bit of housekeeping real quick, though. So a lot of people liked my girl who fell in love with a bear video. And I would like to make more of those because it seemed like, you know, the interaction was high. It didn't get the highest view count, but it got really good read interaction, which means you guys liked it. So I'd like to make more. The only thing that's hard about it is it's hard to find comics like that. So if you have some suggestions for books like that, if you can find really cringy, bad comic books like that, let me know. And, you know, I'll take a look at it and maybe I'll do a, a narrative video on it. We'll see. So leave some suggestions. Help me find some books worth doing videos on like that. And uh, I'll keep doing them because it was fun to do. That was more of a test run to uh, try out kind of my new uh, software editor, trying to make, make better quality videos and stuff. So if you do know some good cringy comics, let me know. So anyway, let's get into this. We got Leslie Jones here, one of the uh, female stars of Ghostbusters 2016. Um, if you don't know what she looks like, there she is right there. If you've seen that movie, and this is the tweet that got that article. So let's go over it. So insulting. Like, F us. We didn't count. It's like something Trump would do. Gonna redo Ghostbusters. Better with men. We'll be huge. Those women ain't Ghostbusters. So annoying. Such a D move. And I don't give F. I'm just saying. So another like important funny thing here. She actually retweeted this three times to three different people that added her. She also added all of her co-stars to that movie, wondering if uh, they would maybe respond. And look at the ratio on this one, 583 comments to 94 likes. So she got a little blowback that time. But yeah, she's sending it out a bunch of times. This one, people liked it. 4,000 hearts, 1,200, uh, or uh, 1,200 comments on that one so she and those were just responses she actually didn't put that on her main page it's not on there but basically a little mention from this jones tagged her fellow ghostbuster co-star melissa mccarthy along with reitman so far there have been no responses from anyone involved in the film which has received backlash since the announcement of its intent in england a journalist wrote an open letter to jason reitman citing his missed opportunity Fig's Ghostbusters received mostly positive reviews upon its release. It currently sits at 74% Rotten Tomatoes score and grossed $229 million worldwide. And in particular, the strong foundation of female friendship was mentioned in many reviews. And that's the, that's the key right there, right? The strong foundation of female friendship was mentioned in many reviews. So, I talked about how great that movie was, right? Well... We all, know about, we all know about critics here. I know everybody on my channel is pretty informed that, you know, first off, critics and what the audience likes, it never seems to match up. So you go over to Rotten Tomatoes, you see 74% for 2016 Ghostbusters. Then you go over to the audience score, you see 51%. That kind of says something. And you know what they blame it on, right? That's the trolls that did it. It's just a bad movie. Like, I went into that movie with an open mind. I didn't read anything about it. I just went in and watched it because it was a Ghostbusters movie. And I walked out thinking, that's, that's, that's terrible. And, you know, I didn't even review it. But I think they just refused to come to terms with just most people don't like these forced movies, right? It was not a funny movie. It was full of, like, weird jokes and, you know, talking about their private parts and stuff in the movie. Licking the... And then, then they were licking the... Uh, the proton pack gun this one did i'm like what is this so one of the reasons leslie that you didn't matter is because you lost 70 million dollars for sony why would they make a sequel to a movie that lost 70 million dollars uh, it's not something the president would do he would uh so yeah that is something the president would do he would dump the movie because it didn't make any money <laughs> it's exactly what he would do it makes sense 
So, you know, she goes on this little rant. It's expected. I mean, she got a little bit of press for it. I don't think she's getting a lot of offers in movies. The only thing she's really got going on is Saturday Night Live. So, of course, she's mad that she's not going to be in the new movie, right? But, of course, the media is coming out big time to support this movie. We've got kind of two articles that slammed on it. This is kind of the one that's fun to go through and talk about. This is a really cringy article. It's not a long one. I figured it'd be fun to read and go through talk about all of the, the hijinks going on with the old busted makes me feel good. You can just kind of see right here. Why ignore the female reboot? Well, look right here at this picture. Her making this dumb face, like uh, trying to be like fun. I'm cool, but funny at the same time. And then look at the, uh, look at the original Ghostbusters picture of them when they, this is after they beat uh, Zool, right? And they just kind of look like they're having a good time. All three of them there. But in this, just look, if anything could compare quality to crap, I think that picture really, really brings it up. And, of course, these people are mad still, even though the new Ghostbusters team in the sequel is going to be two dudes, two girls. But, hey, that's not enough. we got to get those dudes out of there, get them out, like brush them off, put in two more women. Boom. we got a legit reboot in their eyes. So we go here. Let's, uh, so let's go through this. Less than three years after Sony's Ghostbusters reboot battled online trolls and fizzled in the box office, Tuesday's news that the property is coming back quickly sparked conversations among fans about nostalgia and toxic fandom and legacy. Jason Reitman, son of original Ghostbusters director Ivan Reitman, will helm a continuation of the series that ignores Paul Figg's and female-led reboot, which starred those chicks... The new film, sources say, will focus on four teens, two boys and two girls, and continue the story of 1984's Ghostbusters and the 1989 sequel. And I think that that's fine, right? This is the movie that should have gotten made in 2016, but I don't know if they could get Bill Murray or what. I don't know what the problem was, but this is a proper passing of the torch movie. You get the old cast to come in here, they mentor the new ones, and then you can reboot the franchise. Perfect. But that's not enough. We still need the uh, the box office deadbeats to come in to make this legit. And then they said they come in and pitch this whole stupid movie idea in this. Like I think oh, ignoring the 2016 film is a missed opportunity. Hannah Woodhead argues in a piece she wrote for the London-based magazine, Little White Lies. She writes that while 2016's Ghostbusters wasn't an original idea, the all-female team pushed the franchise toward an important way that may have been lost in the new vision. See, these people, these people, these NPCs, man, they think that businesses run on unicorns and rainbows, right? It's more important to push the franchise forward in an important way than to make money. Right, and he says, I think we suffer from a collective sense of nostalgia in film. We're always looking to the past rather than the future. I kind of agree with that. Like, I'm kind of tired of them like rebooting and remaking movies in general. But if you're gonna do Ghostbusters, it does need to be a sequel to the original, and it needs to be just do a passing of the torch. Like, 2016 was a terrible idea. 1984's Ghostbusters is widely considered a classic, and while the 1989 follow-up was less well, was less than well received. It does have its fans. Decades later, Figs All Female 2016, Ghostbusters received a fresh 74% on Rotten Tomatoes, higher than Ghostbusters 2. In addition to the uh, misogynistic trolling online, Jones faced attacks that caused her to leave Twitter for a period of time. So, that's a stupid comment that it's higher than Ghostbusters 2. First off, like, any of Rotten Tomatoes reviews on Ghostbusters 2 are going to be recent. That movie came out in 1989. And it's nowhere near as good as the original, but it's still a decent movie. And it's leagues above 2016's Ghostbusters. That that movie, <laughs> I'd rather watch the 1989 sequel a hundred times than ever watch that 2016 version again. I watched that one time and I was done. So I think it's a really entertaining movie that was doomed simply because it wasn't a film in a certain very loud percentage that the audience wanted. That This is uh, them talking about Ghostbusters 2, and that's right. See, the D Ghostbusters 2 was more of like a kid's movie, 
now Ghostbusters 1 was also absolutely a kid's movie, but there were a lot of adult jokes in that movie that if you haven't watched that movie in a long time, go back and rewatch it as an adult, and you'll see like a lot of the humor that you probably missed when you were a kid, particularly that scene like uh, with Dan Aykroyd when he's dreaming about the ghost and a lot of the flirting that Peter Vakeman does. A lot of stuff there, I think. So she goes on to talk about here that it frustrates me that this new film, what frustrates me about this new film, and I'm very well aware that we've had very little news, is how keen they are to distance themselves from the 2016 version. Not only will it feel like a victory to all the wrong people, but it just feels like a creative step backwards. So that's BS. Number one, this is the film, that, like I said, that should have got made in the first place. And of course they're going to distance themselves from the 2016 movie. It lost $70 million and people hate it. People don't like that movie. So of course they're going to distance themselves from it. Now, her whole argument here, the in between the lines, is that the agenda that they want to push, you know, with this stuff gets knocked back. But, you know, now you're instead going to do things that people want. And to them, it's, it's, they don't want this made because to them, it feels like a victory to all the people that hated that movie, which they consider, you know, of course, misogynistic trolls, you know, so they don't want them to get a win is the thing that's really bothering her. They don't want the people that hated that movie and didn't support it to get a win. And, you know, I'm sorry, but people didn't like your movie. No one came out to see it. And the the damage from that movie that was that the damage that movie did to the Ghostbusters franchise, I think is still there and it's gonna hurt the new movie. Because people will get confused about, you know, branding and what's going on. Like you're gonna they're gonna really have to work hard to make sure that people know this is a sequel to the old movie. So that families like the parents will bring their kids to see it and stuff like that. They have to get people on board with it. They need to distance themselves as far away from that movie so that they can recoup the $70 million that's lost because of people like you who wanted it so bad. And this is such a perfect example of the loud 8% that are NPC and that they have no marketing power. We got people like Gillette, these Gillette companies coming out and Everyone thinks that that's the market that they want, and it's not. So she goes on here to talk about how Spider-Verse did it right, right? And that you can have like a, a universal plot. Like, why can't the universes merge together and bring the teams together, right? Absolutely clinging to the idea that this 2016 version is what needs to happen. It's, it's so great to see them lose and like re about it because they lose. They're losing. And finally, we have Sony willing to do the right thing now and shut these people up. I love it. But no, we're not going to do a universal plot. They're going to keep the budget as low as possible for this movie to recoup money. And bringing in the 2016 movie would require like multiple sets. And a universe, like, definitely some CGI to show the universe is merging. It's going to be expensive, right? Why do they need to do that when nobody liked the 2016 version? <laughs> no one's going to care except you people. So we can just skip down to here and say, The Troin, the Ghostbusters reboot film encountered, continued something he's seen before, which... As when actor John Boyega was the target of comments following the Star Wars The Force Awakens trailer in 2014. I don't remember that. And it would be seen again from The Last Jedi when Kelly Marie Tran was forced to leave social media. Woodhead thinks that the new Star Wars films proves that movies like Ghostbusters can succeed as long as they manage to blend nostalgia and newness in a smart way. And without acknowledging the 2016 movie, you're ignoring some of that nostalgia. <laughs> No one's nostalgia. First off, it's only been a couple of years. There's no nostalgia there. The nostalgia comes from the 1980s version, the one people liked. No one gives a crap about that movie. It's already in the dollar bins at Walmart. 
The reason the new Star Wars films worked is because they retained the spirit of the original films while really pushing forward and found the right cast for the job. Even then, we see the same misogyny and racism directed at the cast of those films as we saw directed at Feg's Ghostbusters. There's an element of gatekeeperism where fans of the original want things to be how they were in the good old days. Which ties into this nostalgia, but it's 2019. And we're too far gone to make the same films over and over. You know, it's funny. I never see articles like this for, you know, other movies. It's only movies that are, of course, you know, with these men here. And they want it to be like this with these whammons. And it's just funny to me. But I love that this is totally a win for all of us that this movie is getting made. And this movie's getting ignored. We'll never have to look at this smug, stupid face. We'll get to see the old faces we love. These should be the three dudes in there. Hopefully Bill will come back. But I know Dan and Ernie will for sure be in the whole movie. Bill Murray probably have a cameo. I don't even... I think that you can just bring him in, do a certain scene, like a couple scenes with him, and then you can just have Dan and Ernie kind of head the film. I think that would be fine. But you, you need definitely... You need to have Bill come in for a little bit. But I'm really looking forward to the proper reboot. Anyway, this will probably be my last video on Ghostbusters for a while because I can't imagine anything else. And we've kind of already covered the the reads about it. So hopefully we'll get some uh, really good positive news about Bill Murray coming in. I would talk about that. But anyway, leave a comment. Let me know what you thought about this video. Also, uh, you know, let me know about some comics that you recommend that are really cringy. And like and subscribe, hit the notification bell, that good stuff. And I will see all of you on the next one. Peace.